State of Exception. This is um, a one school for all lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, at S4 University College for my wonderful international students that I would like you to watch by the 28th of September uh, when, we, when we next meet. So um, by way of giving you a background and some introduction to um, Agamben's theory of um, the State of Exception, I would like to um, say a few things about what he assumes you already know. Um, and, um, and, the, and the two things are about executive power, which I think you already know about, and, um, and the state of exception itself in, um, or the dictatorship um, in Roman law. Um, and, and I will try to tell you about those um, through two stories from antiquity. So the first one is taken from the Peloponnesian War, which is between Athens and Sparta. Um, and in the year 415, there was one general called Alcibiades um, who persuaded Athens to invade um, and, uh, or help out a town in Sicily. So there was probably the biggest fleet um, of ships and warriors that were ever used until then in the Peloponnesian War um, that was sent to Italy under the command of three generals, uh, most famously Alcibiades. Um, but before he actually had time to get to Sicily, he was called back to Athens to stand trial for um, a, a, a crime that they thought he had committed. So immediately he goes back and, um, and in fact he escapes the people who brought, brought him back to court and eventually um, defects to Sparta's side, who were then um, deciding to intervene here and um, help out the, um, the other people in that town in Sicily which meant that the fleet of the Athenians that were there um, were defeated, a crushing defeat. It was the turning point of the Peloponnesian War, and, um, and only a few of them trickled back to Athens in um, dishonor. Famously, Athenians and ancient um, democracies and ancient polit politicians realized, um, because of this and many other um, situations that democracy or parliamentary democracy uh, and democratic proceedings can sometimes get in the way of something where you need to the situations in which you have to make decisions on the ground really quick and whilst today you can communicate um, from some big um, decision center democratic decision center in your home country um, that has not traditionally been the case so uh, so what we have tended to do is to give executive powers to um, to politicians it's not the legal powers of the um, of the people who make new laws and decide on budgets that would be the parliament or the congress um, and it's not the legal powers that sentence people to punishment or to rewards or, um, or um, fines uh, that is the, the legal power it is the executive power which does what the politicians or what the um, congress has decided to be done and they are done they are allowed to do so with a little bit free hands if you like um, so that they don't have to keep on coming back to the courts and to the congress and parliament buildings to find out new um, new orders and this uh, story demonstrates how difficult it is to um, to conduct warfare when you are being controlled by a democratic organ and um, and so warfare has traditionally been the kind of thing that comes under democratic um, and comes under um, these executive powers. And of course, we saw as soon as uh, as soon as presidents of America um, are instated, as soon as they start work and start working, they sign lots of executive orders because they stand for the executive power in the USA. Uh, and executive orders are something they can do without having to refer back to Congress. So that's the first one: executive power. Famously, uh, and, and that was in 415 before uh, before our common era, um, and famously shortly before that, um, in just north of where we were just talking about, in Rome, the uh, Roman Republic had only just started off. They had um, overthrown their, their kings uh, in 509 um, BCE, and, um, and in antiquity, um, Romans hated kings but they loved dictators and today we would say the rest uh, the opposite wouldn't we that that democracies very often love their kings and queens 
um, but but hate um, dictators. But the word dictator had a particular meaning, and the meaning is usually exemplified by the story of Cincinnatus, who um, lived at the beginning in the first years of the Roman Republic in 458, um, when the um, the two um, leaders of the state, democratic uh, elected leaders of the state, had failed in their attempts to defend Rome uh, and its area from um, aggression from their neighbours. And the people came to Cincinnatus, and famously, Cincinnatus was out in his field, as you see here, a field not, like, not unlike this one, um, and he was ploughing. Um, and, um, and they said, uh, and, and these envoys of state came to Cincinnatus, and, um, and he was immediately worried, and he said, is everything okay? And they said, well, it might turn out all right for you and for me. Can you get on your democratic clothes, your toga? And he goes and puts on his democratic clothes, and they um, they instate him as dictator, as a dictator. He had complete power over the state. He wasn't a king, but he temporarily had complete power. By way, at which point, Cincinnatus goes back back to Rome, um, commands everybody of military age to um, to gather on the field of Mars and to take with them some wooden spikes. And they all go out and march um, and join the, um, the, the armies of Rome and surround their enemies with these spikes and, and close them in, um, thereby winning that particular battle. And, um, and Cincinnatus then um, returns to plowing his field only 15 days after he had been declared dictator. So within a few years of becoming a, a republic, Rome had instated this function of a dictator at the very core of its democracy. Um, the, di the dictatorship which allowed one person to take on extraordinary powers to save the state. And it's a wonderful story of Cincinnatus and it had uh, lots of um, tradition afterwards so by all means Google Cincinnatus. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting story and it's of course to be taken with a pinch of salt. It's, uh, a lot of that is legendary. So essentially we have two, two Non non democratic democratic orders right at the centre of Western democracies. The one is executive power, um, where the people decide on a law, but then they delegate one person who is who is not necessarily part of the democratic order to um, to apply that law, um, and that person will then control the population in keeping with the population's wishes. So the population in their parliament decide on the law, but they then submit to the law as it is enacted by the executive power. And the police would be a good example of that. We decide whether the police should be armed or not, but then we accept that we are being protected and patrolled and may be arrested by an armed police force. So that's the executive power. And then this state of exception, this dictatorial power, uh, when there is a crisis, we decide on a dictator or a certain number of people, um, roles, usually um, sometimes one person, who then has extraordinary powers, um, powers that they don't usually have. Uh, for example, if, the, if we say that the police are allowed to have bare arms for a, for a week or two weeks. But those, those powers are limited by time. They're not limited by, by democracy. Uh, it's not that the um, it's not that they're they are they are no longer following the normal rules, um, but they are limited by time. We realise that it's only as long as the crisis is going on that they are late, uh, allowed to do, do those. And so, at the heart of and this is Agamben's um, important point, there are logical and historical reasons, um, but for this and 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 these stories kind of illustrate what those reasons are. But essentially, at the heart of democracy, there is um, a non-democratic power. Uh, in principle, it goes um, from a crisis to a state of exception, so long as that state of exception has a limit. But if the limits are stretched, then it is simply dictatorship, which is, which is why we hate it. Um, because a dictatorship, which is not limited, is not, is, is not to be distinguished from um, a king or an unlimited power. An unlimited power is harmful. And of course, Agamben's claim in his book is something like um, to state that the ability to, to declare the state of exception is the power of dictatorship. And that ability to identify a crisis 
that dictatorial power is running rife in democracies today. We'll be discussing that in class.